In the 1980s, electronic music and synthesizers were everywhere. But only a few years before, in the late 70s, punk music was dominating the popular music scene with its aggressive, DIY, guitar-driven sounds. In the transition from this raw rock and roll sound to a sci-fi dreamscape of futuristic synthesizers, we find Gary Newman with his 1979 hit single, Cars. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvelously well. Welcome back to another episode in the series. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. And of course, if you're into production, you can go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Born Gary Anthony James Webb in 1958 in Hammersmith, London, Gary Newman began his musical career in 1977 in a band called Mean Street, an active participant in the rise of punk in England. It was his second band, The Lasers, that introduced him to bassist Paul Gardiner, with whom Newman would form his breakthrough band Tubeway Army. Tubeway Army also featured Newman's uncle Jess Lidyard on drums. The band signed with Beggar's Banquet record label and by 1978 had released their first recordings. While Tubeway Army was formed in the fires of the punk revolution, they quickly embraced electronic sounds. In many ways, they kicked off the electronic colors of the next decade, boasting the first UK number one hit that was centered around synthesizers. Our Friends Electric in 1979. Written by Newman, Our Friends Electric showcases the band's characteristic style, electronic sound around science fiction inspired lyrics. This track in particular is referenced to Philip K. Dick's popular novel, that had just come out the previous year, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? In 2015, Newman explained, All my early songs were about being alone or misunderstood. As a teenager, I'd been sent to a child psychiatrist and put on medication. I had Asperger's and saw the world differently. I immersed myself in sci-fi writers, Philip K. Dick and J.G. Ballard. Lyrics came from short stories I'd written about what London would be like in 30 years. These machines, friends, come to the door. They supply services of various kinds, but your neighbors never know what they really are since they look human. The one in the song is a prostitute, hence the inverted commas. It was released in May of 1979 and sold a million copies. I had a number one single with a song about a robot prostitute and no one knew. The song and its album Replicas were the band's last single under the name Tubeway Army. After this, Newman's future recordings would all be released under his name, although he would keep many of the musicians of Tubeway Army as his backup band. More recently, in 2019, Newman explained that he felt the name of the band, with its origins in the punk rock world, did not represent the new and exciting sounds of the music they were creating. As soon as I found synthesizers and started making electronic music, I told Beggars I didn't want to be called Tubeway Army anymore. I'd seen punk was finished and I thought the name Tubeway Army overshadowed the new music. Even before the release of Our Friends Electric, Newman was already working on and recording solo material, having recruited a new permanent drummer, Cedric Sharpley, and a keyboardist, Chris Payne. By the time the Replicas album was released, Newman and his band were already in the studio working on the first solo album, The Pleasure Principle. The debut single from this album, Cars, kicked off Newman's solo career with unprecedented success and revolutionized the popular music landscape of England in the wake of punk's massive implosion. Cars kicks off with a futuristic whirling that foreshadows the electronic masterpiece that is to come. Despite his punk roots, Newman saw electronic music as the way of the future, even in his early days of Tubeway Army. He recently recalled the first time he saw a synthesizer while Tubeway Army was recording their first tracks. We went to the studio later that year to record our album, which should have been all the songs from our set. 
It should have been a punk album. But when we got to the studio, while the others were unloading the gear, I went into the control room to introduce us to the engineer, and I noticed there was a synthesizer in the corner of the room. I'd never seen a real one before, so I was blown away by the switches and dials. I'm a little geeky when it comes to technology, so I was fascinated by it. Then I asked if I could have a go, if he could turn it on. So he turned it on and it was an amazing experience. I pressed the key and the whole room shook. It was the most huge, powerful and floor shaking thing I'd ever heard. So I was fiddling around with this keyboard and trying to make different sounds. And by the time the band finished setting up and came into the control room, I said to them, everything's changed. We're not doing the album that we came here for. It's all different. By the time Newman was working on cars, he was fully engrossed in the electronic sphere employing a mini Moog synthesizer, which complements its catchy bass line, and a poly Moog synthesizer, which provides those floating electronic string sounds over the tracks. Although Cars eschews the guitar-driven musical sounds of punk and earlier rock styles, it does employ a classic rhythm section of bass and drums. In fact, Newman says the song was actually written on a bass guitar. He explained that he had just purchased a Shergold modulator bass, and that the first four notes he played after pulling it out of its case became the opening bass hook of cards. I thought, that sounds pretty good. I'll keep that. And then I did something else. The next four notes became the other hook. It was really simple, like a child's song. It took me five to 10 minutes to get the three parts of the song worked out and figure out a structure. Then it took me another 20 minutes to do the lyric. It's funny to me that one of the most well-known electronic singles ever was written on a bass guitar. I've written about 400 songs and only two were written on bass guitar. Cars was one of them. The song structure is really quite simple. Each robotic verse is followed by an instrumental break. After the second verse and break, there is an extended instrumental bridge, which eventually fades to a close. There's not even a chorus. Matching the song's futuristic character, Newman sings the song in an almost sterile, robotic performance style. But funny enough, the lyrics themselves are not futuristic at all. In fact, they are unremarkably contemporary to Newman's time of recording, singing rather simply about the feeling of sitting in one's car, in which you have complete control of your environment. Here in my car, I feel safest of all. I can lock all my doors. It's the only way to live in cars. Newman credits the song's lyrical inspiration to experiencing a moment of road rage directed towards him. I was in traffic in London once and I had a problem with some people in front. They tried to beat me up and get out of the car. I locked the doors and eventually drove up on the pavement and got away from them. It's kind of to do with that. It explains how you can feel safe inside a car in the modern world. When you're in it, your whole mentality is different. It's like your own little personal empire with four wheels on it. Cars and the rest of the Pleasure Principle album was recorded at Marcus Music Studio in London in 1979, at the same time that Newman's Tubeway Army album Replicas was dominating the UK album charts. Cars was released on August the 21st, 1979, as the lead single for the album, which would follow on September the 7th. The single hit number one in the UK and Canada, and the top 10 in the US, Ireland, and Australia. It remains one of his most well-known songs and a staple of his live performances. After achieving such massive commercial success, Gary Newman's career has been long and prolific. To date, he has recorded 21 albums, with his most recent being Intruder, released in May of 2021. He has constantly pushed boundaries and challenged generations of musicians to new creative heights. Despite his constant reinvention of himself and his music, Cars remains largely unchanged. He explained, I did try to update it, I just couldn't get it any better. And no wonder, fusing together futuristic sounds with contemporary automobile imagery, Gary Newman created an almost timeless track which declared that future was upon us. All I can say is I was a little kid when this came out and this dominated the radio. This was absolutely huge. Like Sweet Dreams that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, this song just sounded like nothing else when it came out. In fact, even talking about it, all my hairs are standing on end. I remember being a kid 
and just hearing that old I mean it sounded like robots to me I mean talking about that robotic sterile way that uh, Gary Newman sings it makes absolutely perfect sense with everything else I honestly as a little kid thought it was just like robot music and when I saw him on top of the pops and he's just like just like this like stone faced singing it I mean all the shivers run down your spine you're just like this is robot music and it's incredible it's interesting now listen to it now and you actually do f hear some feel and groove in the drums it doesn't sound like a drum machine because it is a real rhythm section and I think that's something like a really good lesson for us that you can make really cool really dramatic sounding tracks and still employ some traditional elements with some futuristic elements because at the time drum machines were kind of crap they weren't very good and this kind of dry you know 70s style drum sound just now sounds really really cool and in those days sounded even cooler Gary Newman first of all in Tubeway Army and then of course with this solo single cars just completely changed everything the fact that this was such a massive hit in the UK I think every single band like followed this and the whole new romantic and new wave element that was about to come because this is essentially like you know in the UK I know it's hard for people to accept punk was dead by 79 we were in post punk and new wave was coming in and it was a big deal I mean I don't know what to say his his look his sound his music everything about him is so much bigger than I can put into any kind of video because if you look at all of the industrial artists how they were influenced by him and how they name check him you can hear it that sort of sterility that darkness that foreboding sometimes in the music is in all of that stuff I mean it's sort of it's sort of goth it's sort of you know robotic it's sort of industrial it's touches on so many things and for me of course as well um, being a big fan of the German synth pop music of the 70s as well you could hear that in the music as well and I think it really brought so many things together and continues to be a way through into all of those other bands if you discover Gary Newman from 1979 you're probably going to be ending up listening listening to Kraftwerk if you haven't heard them before or you know any of those incredible German bands and it's, it just will take you in so many different directions I mean we owe Gary Newman a lot well thanks ever so much for watching please leave any comments and questions below and most importantly let us know what other songs you love what other things touched you when you were a kid and, and really inspired you because to me this is one of the most important and inspiring songs from that period. Thanks, everybody. So long, farewell, au revoir, au revoir, adios, tschüss, au revoir, um, adios, uh, sayonara, goodbye.